Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Ronnie. Hey, John and crew. With the recent price increase of HBO Max, it got me thinking, why is the price going up? We now have more streaming services than ever before and more amazing shows. The whole point of competition and a lack of monopolies are to encourage companies to lower prices to increase customers, yet they just keep going up and up. I know the production budgets are going up, but they got to realize it can only go so far. Can you please help me understand their economic process? Thanks and bring on the filthy. All right, Ronnie, thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, listen, the cost of having streaming services has is a big topic of conversation amongst those of us who... Well, I mean, I think a lot of us are cable covered. Being a cable cutter now does not make you in the minority. I think I don't know a lot of people that have cable anymore. So, no. but that has been one of the big topics of conversation, especially recently, where in recent months we've had HBO, Netflix, Disney Plus all institute more pi price hikes, right? We're seeing that happen. Ronnie, if I'm understanding you right, is asking listen, don't they get that prices are supposed to go down? <laughs> And you're going to price people out and all that kind of stuff. And look, you, you raise a really good point. But as we sit down and look at why are we seeing all these price hikes happen within these streaming companies and, and things like that, there's a couple of basic fundamental things we have to understand. The first thing is this. When Apple came out with Apple TV Plus and announced $4.99, and by the way, it still is $4.99. But don't believe for a second it's going to stay that for long. But we all said right up front, oh, they're doing this at a loss right now because they know they need to get some market share, right? We know that in the world of Netflix and, and all these other things, that if you're going to come in with a new Apple, you know, a competitor here, you got to come in with a low price, try to get some market share. But, but it's going to be at a loss, and so they're going to have to raise the prices later once they carve out some market share. So... There's that. We said the same thing when Disney Plus was launched. It's like, because what it, it launched at $7.99, $6.99, something six, like that. It was like Disney Plus, I feel like it was uh, $5.99, because I remember like it might have been five, steel. But it was five, six, or seven, yeah. right? It was in that neighborhood. But we all said, oh, we ain't going to stay at that because they're going to go out of business. They're just simply going to go out of business when they do. Because look, if you own an Apple cart, this is a simple thing, you own an Apple cart on the corner and it costs you. 15 cents per apple that you acquire to sell and you only sell the apples at 12 cents well that means the more business to do you do the more in debt you're going if it takes you 15 cents to acquire each apple that you have and then you sell them for 12 you're going to go to business there's no business there you might get a lot of more customers but every time a customer comes to you you're getting poorer and poorer and poorer until you're going to run out of business the fact the reality is that in this new world of streaming, a lot of these streamers are operating at costs that are not sustainable. Some of them are, and that we're getting into that area. Now we got $15, $16, $17 dollars a month. We're getting into that area, but like Apple TV Plus for $4.99. It's just, Apple's got all the money in the world, so they can float that for a bit, but those prices are going to be going up too. So that's the first thing, right? That a lot of them initially are operating at a loss. The second thing is this. Let's go back to the Apple analogy. Let's say when you open your Apple cart, last week, uh, you were acquiring the apples for 10 cents a piece and you're selling them for 15 cents a piece. Great. Every new customer you get, you're making five cents. But since you opened your apple cart, the price of those apples, for, the price of you getting those apples on your cart has ballooned from 10 cents an apple to 17 cents an apple. Well, you can't keep your prices at 15 cents an apple. You can't. <laughs> Now, you can raise the price, and then one of your neighbors, Bob, who's never returned your lawnmower, comes over to you and says, God don't you know that. you're going to lose customers this way? You should be lowering your prices, but, but, but you, you can't. Because without increasing your prices, every apple you sell, you get poorer and poorer and poorer. That is the basic. Now, look, I'm oversimplifying it a, a thousand times. I totally acknowledge I am. But that's the basic fundamentals here. You can be at a, a price that works for you, but as inflation, property acquisition, pr production costs, as all these things go up, suddenly your price that was making you a little bit of a profit is now suddenly costing you and every new member you get signed up to your service is actually driving you closer to bankruptcy. The third thing to keep in mind is this. I've said this for many years. When you look at what you get, for $15 a month, 
on all of the, the major ones, on Netflix, on uh, Disney+, Plus, on HBO Max, when you look what you get on each of those things for $15 and the sheer library that all three of those services have, that is still a value proposition. I mean, it still is. To get all of them, it becomes really expensive and we need to make choices. But anyway, those are the reasons that the prices go up. They can't just go like to hell with us going out of business. Let's lower our prices. You can't do that. Guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleep. Guys, let me tell you, just a couple of days ago, Ann and I received our Helix mattress and it is the best mattress we have ever slept on in our entire lives. We had like this $3,000 specialized mattress that we got like five, six years ago and we liked it very much, but this one completely outdoes it. It's night and day and you can get matched with your perfect mattress too. See, Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just like a minute to complete, and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. I hopped online, took the Helix quiz, and Anna and I were matched with the perfect mattress for us, and it is so easy to set up. Simply take it out of the box, get it positioned on your mattress, take off the plastic, and then give it an hour to to breathe to reach its full size and you will not believe how comfortable this thing is. All you got to do is go to helixsleep.com slash campia. Take their 60 second sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And it's risk free. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans so a great night's sleep is never far away. And here's the best part. Helix is offering up to $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com com slash campia anyway chris uh you we've had these conversations about like we're getting to the point now that we're gonna all of us are gonna have to start becoming a little bit more picky and choosy like right now a new streaming service comes out i sign up to it but we're not gonna be able to do that for much longer as the prices go up what would you say to somebody like ronnie who's coming out and say look it, it, this isn't the way the market's supposed to work competition is supposed to drive prices down how would you respond to that well i mean <laughs> You, you still have to pay for something what it actually truly is worth, right? And right now I can have a cup of coffee at Starbucks or I could have Apple TV is kind of how I think of it. And that one fancy like Trenta latte is my month of entertainment for really, really great shows. So for me, I don't think this is an a, a egregious price in any way, shape or form. That's my personal opinion. We also have to look at though too, we're also now getting rid of people being able to share passwords. So that's another thing that people I think are, <laughs> I'm so sorry, oh, I'm Ray, I didn't you. mean to betray you. Um, but you know, I think that's the reason why everyone now is going, oh my gosh, when you add all these up, it's really a lot of money. Yeah, if you have every single streaming service and you're the one paying for it, it is a lot of money, right? So you do just have to become a more choosy consumer. Now, what I think is going to be great about that is when people start making these choices, then these streaming services are going to go, okay, what can we actually put on here? We need to think quantity over quality, or are we really going to focus on nostalgia like Peacock? You know, they have The Office, they have Parks and Rec. People love doing those rewatches. It's so comforting. You know how it goes. Your brain is going to just be in a nice rest mode. Rob so, doesn't know how it goes. He's never seen the true. office. That's true. We've got our office virgin He is our office here. virgin. That's very, very <laughs> that's true. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think what's great about this, though, ultimately, is that it's going to make the content better. So I can totally understand why someone thinks that this is not how this should go economically. But I think you summed it up really, really well. And hopefully what this will do is it'll drive better content to these streaming platforms. Because one of the things Ron says in the thing is, is not wrong. Like, competition in the marketplace is what's supposed to drive prices down. Sure. The problem is when everybody starts in deficit and everybody starts their services operating with unsustainable prices at, and operating at a loss, it has to unfortunately go up. How high? Well, those are discussions to come. But anyway, Rob, you heard what Ronnie's asking. How would you respond? To <clears throat> well, I would say in a way there's not competition here, not in the traditional sense, because like, for instance, Apple and Amazon, they're making shows is not their core business. Like Apple is making stuff to go on their products. Their products are phones, tablets, computers. Amazon, this is just an adjunct. It's basically Amazon, you're buying Amazon Prime. You're paying into Prime, which is to get boxes from them to ship you their product and their 
shows are just a product of that. It's an offshoot. They could probably, I don't know how they do their taxes, but they can chalk it all up to marketing costs, whatever they're paying for their shows or acquiring MGM, however they're going to want to do that. But Disney, they're not competing with HBO. Disney's Disney. And it's like, do you want to buy Disney? And their product is, un they have their library. There's nothing that HBO has that you can say, other than the fact it's movies and stuff we watch. But Disney's their own brand, and they're going to do whatever the hell they want. And it really depends, do you want to buy Disney? Look what they do with their parks. There aren't like other rival parks that rival, I mean, there are other amusement parks, but Disneyland and Disney World are in their cruise lines. It's Disney. If you want to buy into that stuff, no one's going, well, I'm not going to go to Disney Light and pay less. There's only one Disney. HBO, like you said, and we've always said on the show, they're the Tiffany standard of this streaming. Do you want access to what they have for you? There's no other place you're going to get Sex in the City or The Sopranos or The Wire or House of the Dragon or now The Last of Us. That's it. You can't go somewhere else. They are the only people that have it. And what it comes down to is, what entertainment do you as a consumer want? Mm. And what's great is, I think what's great is, yeah, Disney can't go 50 bucks a month. I mean, they have to be competitive to a certain extent, but eventually they might get there because Disney doesn't care. They ultimately are like, it costs $230 to get into Disneyland for you today. What are you going to do? Say, well, you either not go or you pay. I, know. I go to Universal Studios. I know you do. And and <laughs> but I do think I do think that what's going to happen is consumers churn is going to be a regular factor because we just can't it's like anything else. You can't afford everything. Right now, the idea is we can afford whatever we want. We're gonna have to pick and choose. You're gonna have to pick and choose. And I really think that churn is gonna be a thing. Churn's gonna be a deal where people are gonna buy what they want to see. And when like House of the Dragon, hey. If that's all you want to watch, then you dump HBO for two years. And then when you get it back, you've got 10 weeks where you can look at anything on HBO you want. So what I really think is going to happen is we as consumers have to ask ourselves, what is important to us? Where do we get the most value? I mean, like, I like HBO. And when I turn on HBO, I start clicking through and seeing that's how I found, you know, Strange Days. I'm like, oh, look what they dropped this month. And then I'm like, I won't get rid of it. I don't watch Apple very much other than this new Sharp that I want to see and then For All Mankind, but it's so cheap I don't pay much attention to it. I think what's going to happen is what happens with all consumer products. People don't buy everything. They buy what they like. And when they want to buy something else, they will. The problem is the studios are now relying on this fast, quick money. They want to make sure that they've never had for ever. Oh, our subscription base is going to make sure we get $200 million or a billion dollars a month. They've never had that before. So it's the studios that are going, huh, how can we keep these people? But I think the consumer has the power here. I really do. You know, talking about the, the various prices too and the content offerings and stuff like that. Here's a really interesting little example. So we have a Peloton, right? And my wife, Anne, she subscribes to the Peloton monthly you know, things. So she has access to the online trailer, tra uh, trainers and classes and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I said, really? So why do you get that? Instead of like just watching some YouTube videos? Oh, she goes, oh, because they've got a great library of content for the workouts. That's 50 bucks a month. The, the, the Peloton membership is 50 bucks a month because they have this great content that you engage with. Netflix has infinite you could sit down for the rest of your life and watch what's on netflix yeah. and you get that for 15 bucks i get just a little bit of perspective that's all but it is starting to get expensive anyway guys question is for you what do you think about this like have you wondered like ronnie has about why these prices keep going up at what point do we hit that ceiling at what point do we get to a terminal point where okay this is as high as it's going to go now it's when we're going to see i don't know how far off that can be will it get up to 25 bucks a month 30 dollars a month I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there.